Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nut, and welcome back to Fallout 4, but maybe not quite the Fallout 4 you're expecting, because as you honestly may well have missed, because it wasn't exactly you know, desperately well publicised, unlike, say, all the other DLC, which had, like, proper YouTube campaigns and whatever, Bethesda kind of launched this one a little bit on the quiet side. Fallout 4 technically received a new bit of DLC this week, which I believe is just for PC. Sorry, I'm pretty sure this wasn't actually released for consoles. The final bit of DLC, in fact, sadly put into bed a whole bunch of conspiracy theories about how because there was an extra spot left vacant for DLC on PC, therefore that meant that, like, you know, there was going to be a secret further bit of Fallout 4 DLC. No, no, no. It turned out instead to be the Fallout 4 high-resolution texture pack. Thing, which I have just installed and downloaded. So today we're going to have a look at that. And when I say a look at that, we are indeed going to have a look at that because it's a little bit on the subtle side. It is certainly a little bit on the subtle side. And it's probably going to be a little bit even more on the subtle side on YouTube because I can't really show this off exactly how it is. Because the problem is, even though I can record this at a relatively high quality, when I upload to YouTube, YouTube is going to slightly compress it. So. It's quite subtle for me, and it's possibly going to be even more flipping subtle for you. We're going to have a look at it, and we're going to see how nice it is. First, though, I've got to tell you something about this DLC, which is, um, just so you know about file sizes. So, Fallout 4, the entire game, everything in it, all of the maps, all of the existing textures we had already, all of the voice acting, that's a lot of voice acting, all of everything, and Nuka World, and Far Harbor together, was about 40 gigabytes. That was the size of the entirety of Fallout 4. This texture pack which doesn't even retexture everything. It's quite a big bunch of retexture stuff, but it does not retexture 100% of things. Like, say, if you literally just hang on, if I turn into the sun there, you can literally see, like, say, my clothing is still not exactly looking great there. The Grognax skirt and the Grognax bra and the actual kind of, like, the skin texture on my character is still not exactly looking spectacular. It could certainly look a little bit nicer. That skirt in particular could look a lot nicer than it actually does. So this has not done 100% of items in the game. This DLC was 55 gigabytes. It is about 50% bigger than the entire game and all of the rest of the DLC put together for HD textures. That is a really, really big commitment. That is a massive file. It's ridiculous. There are like AAA games coming out today that aren't 55 gigabytes. It's insane. It's also kind of annoying because as I play so much Fallout 4, I keep Fallout 4 on an SSD on my computer so it loads a bit faster. 55 gigabytes on an SSD is a fairly big commitment. I don't have that much SSD space floating around because SSD space is relatively expensive. So I've only got like 250 gig on my SSD and I now need to sacrifice like over 20% of that just to what's effectively an HD textures mod, which feels a little bit harsh to me. Anyway, let's actually have a proper little look at this, because there's some things you should be able to notice straight away. So, for example, this lamp post here, now if we get right up close to this, I think we can see, like, a fairly noticeable improvement in some of the textures right away. Like, it's mainly supposed to be buildings. Basically, you can kind of squish your face right into the buildings and get a much better experience than you used to, which is... A nice to have, but equally, like, if you're standing here and just looking around, you probably wouldn't notice. I think I actually noticed it a bit better on the ground. Like, if you actually kind of get down and actually have a look at some of the ground textures, some of those are definitely a little bit nice. You can just kind of see a lot more detail on the pavements. Now, I've got to say, for a 55 gigabyte retexture pack, the wood on the bridge leading into Sanctuary Hills, that's actually a little disappointing. And this is where the whole thing kind of starts, for me at least, falling apart a little bit because it hasn't done 100% of textures and that means when the actual kind of the uh, the new textures go next to the old textures if you actually see them it actually kind of looks worse than in the first place you can see here that like yeah the trap that I've laid out here this has clearly been done or at least the metal has been done quite nicely I just need to keep stepping back otherwise I will be killed and the blades have been done quite nicely here as well so you know this whole metal thing looks lovely but it's right next to what is now kind of to my mind a fairly noticeably lower quality wooden beam and that just doesn't it's just a musket there okay fine there's just a musket there I don't know why Hopped down by the water here. I can't actually remember whether this involved improvements to water. My brain is now telling me that water shimmeriness is better than it used to be, but I'm not actually sure if that's true, because I'm not sure if any improvements to water are included in this particular texture pack. My brain is telling me it is. Possibly, I'm just thinking it is. I'm pretty sure this texture here looks quite nice. Yeah, this has definitely been improved here. So, like, it's the landscape stuff and the building stuff that's had the work done there. But, yeah... 
I will say that the fact that the wood doesn't seem to have been... Oh dear, the Brahmin is trying to get past the trap again. And that's the sound of a Brahmin being shredded. Oh yeah, the end of the bridge is particularly noticeable because you've kind of got the you've got the wooden thing here, which now looks quite really kind of low res and janky next to these stones here, and they're just a world apart. And it kind of yeah, if you actually pay too close attention to it, it actually kind of takes you out of it a little bit. So yeah, the stonework seems to have been done quite nicely, but yeah, they haven't done the wood paneling. Which is really weird, because there's an awful lot of wood in this game. You build a lot of stuff out of wood. Right, they said this was mainly about urban environments, so let's head down the road and visit some urban environments in that case. Well, I've come to Concord, and I'll admit I'm slightly struggling to sit. Like, I can definitely see there's, like, a slight improvement here, but it's still not perfect. Honestly, I feel like a really heavily modded New Vegas does not look that much worse than the textures I'm seeing here, just in terms of the texture quality, and that's not 55 gigabytes worth of space taken up. But yeah, at least I can vaguely see what they're going at here, which is nice. Still, let's actually go to places I know for a fact should look nice, because the Steam page specifically flags a couple of locations that are supposed to look good, and it flags Lexington as one of those. So let's head to Lexington and have a little looksy round there. I did see a few people commenting, by the way, that their frame rate went to hell when they installed this mod. That hasn't happened for me, at least it hasn't when I'm outside of a lot of action. Things look pretty much the same as they ever did. Uh, my GPU, by the way, is a GTX 970. So, you know, not exactly cutting edge. It's not exactly the newest thing. It's not a 10 series, and the 10 series Titans will be along sooner or later. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I wouldn't mind upgrading to that at one point or other. But yeah, with a 970 with this pack installed, albeit I should stress again, it's installed on an SSD, not an HDD. So that might be giving me a little bit of an advantage. I don't know. Things seem to be holding up pretty well, uh, but let's go and find some things to murder, because it's quite possible when I start murdering, yes, when we actually get some enemies on screen, then, and incidentally, you guys looking any better, would you like to just toss yourselves into my blade and we can find out, yeah, good luck with that, by the way, and I've reached level 63, lovely, keep just chopping up basic ghouls, few enemies on screen at the same time there and didn't see any slowdown at all. So the bare minimum, at least on this setup, with far from the best quality gaming PC, this is not an elite PC at all, I haven't seen much in the way of any form of performance degradation for installing this, which is nice. As promised, here in an urban environment, I think I can see the difference, but it's subtle. It's really, really subtle, and if you stick your face right in it, you can definitely still kind of sense what looks to me like, yeah, like just stick your face there, then that looks quite low resolution. I'm really not even that close. In fact, actually, that looks lower resolution than my weapon. As I understand it, the weapons haven't been redone. So there's definitely still some quite low res textures just floating around here, even in the urban environments the game specifically flagged were the ones they'd actually done the most amount of work on. I think it actually might be the bigger showing assets that it's most obvious on. So like the dino sign there and the, uh, yeah, the various billboards. Up above, I think they look ever so slightly improved as well. In fact, the easiest way to test that would be if I was to head to a big road with lots of billboards. Ah, never mind. There's a big Nuka Cola sign up there, and I'll need to get a bit closer to these guys, but I swear those look a little bit nicer than they used to. It's not just big things, though. Some of the loot, I think, has had a small upgrade as well. I swear that desk fan's looking nice, as are a couple of lamps and computers. Lockers as well. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, so there's definitely been some work on some of the small items as well, not just the big stuff. Vehicles have definitely had a nice little upgrade, by the way. The metal and the rustiness. Probably the metal stuff is some of the nicest work that's been done, just kind of redoing some of the vehicles and all of that. That's pretty nice. Oh, yeah. That I feel like I can actually see a step up there, which is lovely. Yeah, maybe it's just because I can't get close enough to actually examine it closely, but to me, the billboards feel like they've actually had some nice work done on them. Oh, yeah, it is the posters. You can literally see it here. So I've got to the side of this here bus stop. You've kind of got the nice higher resolution texture here for the poster, but sadly, it's been put next to this metal bar, which has just been... Oh, no! No, 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 no. Why would you have done it this way? Where some things are improved and some things are still really, really horrible and blur if you get too close to them. Oh dear. No, I feel like this has been a mistake. I feel like Bethesda have made poor choices in how they've done this. 
the fact that, like, this is a really common asset, like, just like, you know, just a basic metal post that holds up a flipping bus shelter all over the shop. It's just really weird to have this next to that. It just doesn't look good when you get up close to it. I will say though, that's a nice rock texture. That's definitely a nice improvement and it doesn't look too out of place next to the now probably quite noticeably slightly lower resolution, just basic ground they've got. Yeah, that's the problem. It's just all of a sudden the game's a bit of a mishmash of different quality textures. And sure, that was always the case, but now because I'm looking for it, because they specifically flagged that I've actually installed this mod. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, it's not a mod. It's a DLC officially. This is all a DLC pack. Uh, yeah, I'm actually looking for it, so therefore it kind of looks worse than it did to begin with, because previously I wasn't paying attention, but now I'm trying to look for it, because bloody hell I want to get my money's worth for 55 gigs of SSD. I've nipped inside Cabot House, we can have a look at some interiors, in particular, the clean stuff, whether like furniture, for example, is looking a lot nicer. And I will say, yeah, actually, interestingly, there are definitely improved wood textures, because this cabinet's got it, but they didn't see fit to create some for the wall, so this cabinet is now looking much better than the wall it's positioned next to. So it feels like for the furniture you can place, they've actually done a fair bit of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely think like the antique globe and this kind of little desk thing here is looking nicer than it did. And that floor's looking fine. And that rug's looking, I'm pretty sure, nicer than it used to as well. So there's definitely some nice work on the clean interior stuff. So if you like using, say, the furniture from the vault -Tec DLC, the nice clean stuff, then that definitely looks pretty nice at the minute. But yeah, the nicer quality carpets and rugs and bits of furniture and lighting, this all looks nice. This all looks very, very nice indeed, and I think you can actually see a pleasing difference on some of those textures. I also think they've redone the books. If I recall correctly, I think the spines of the books have been done, which is nice. It's nice to see them looking a little bit nicer. And I've just stepped inside Haymarket Hall here so we can see how potentially some of the scruffier internal bits of furniture are looking instead. So, ah... They definitely have not redone the mattress, because I remember thinking about this, because when I kind of uh, did up the... And by the way, there's a noodle cup. I'm glad he, the noodle cup is significantly higher resolution to look at than the mattress there. Yeah, when I uh, modded the kind of uh, the texture improvements into New Vegas, I remember thinking, the mattress in New Vegas now look better than the ones in Fallout 4. And they still do, because that mattress texture has not been redone, and now it looks really, really scruffy next to the floor. And this... Oh, oh dear. Yeah, that rubbish, and this, just look at that. Compared to what we just saw in Kappa House a second ago, that rug looks absolute. It just looks like a sticker. It's like a sticker. Someone's just stuck a massive sticker that looks like a rug to the ground, and compared to the table, which I think has been done, now the ground underneath it looks absolutely catastrophically awful, and they did the sleeping bag, but they didn't do the mattress. So the mattress now, the mattress now looks like that, and the sleeping bag looks like that, and the sleeping bag now looks distinctly better than the mattress does, because, oh, they've been so inconsistent with what does or doesn't get done. And I think, incidentally, oh, yeah, yeah, you can really clearly see it there. So that sofa looks pretty dreadful, and that chair looks really nice, and they're next to each other, so it's really, really flipping obvious. And I've just nipped to Diamond City to see if I can get a view as to whether any of, for example, the clothing textures have been done at all. The Missy, everyone's gone to bed. So we may just have to wait until morning. Hang about here. I think I shall just spend the night drinking noodles. I will say, as I get slightly worryingly close to this man's various private areas, his outfit does look to me like it is a slightly higher resolution than I would expect. Possibly it has been done. But then, why did my own Grognax uniform look like it hadn't? Excuse me, I just need to have a look see at you as well. Just get my face right up close to you. That's... I'm not sure. Once again, it's just so subtle, I just cannot be sure. Though I will say it would appear the food labels have been. I definitely think the uh, yum yum deviled eggs, potentially that quantum label and the sugar bombs, are slightly better than they used to be. Right, let's try a few different locations out here. I've just come out to the Nakano residence, because of course out here, we're by the water, where we've got a whole bunch of different textures. And just a second ago, I swear I just saw... Right. 
So out here by Nakano, the wood that's here <laughs> is quite a bit nicer than the wood by Sanctuary Hills. Which is weird, but yeah, they've done some forms of wooden flooring, but not others. And incidentally, I don't think they've improved the cat. I mean, this is probably where some of the best work is, to be honest. Like, if you really, really closely examine the sand and the wet sand and the rocks and all of that, yeah... That's where some really, really nice stuff is. I think, like, you can see... But even here, like, where I think you can actually see it, it's a, such a modest difference. This is uh, such a very, very slight nice to have. You could very happily play the game without ever noticing that this has been switched on. But, alright, fine. The coastlines probably look a fair bit nicer than lots of the other bits and pieces. Absolutely. Right, out to Far Harbour, where, to be honest, the effects will be minimised because I don't think there's been any change to the mist and that kind of makes things a bit more blurry anyway. Though, regardless, certainly things do look a little bit nicer. That's actually some really nice work on the walls there. That looks nice, at least. But again, yes, you end up with really nice textures next to really old-fashioned scruffy ones, which is a shame. Sorry, I forgot to mention at the beginning, this is all Mac settings, by the way. This is the PC version with absolutely all Mac settings. So... Yeah, you've kind of got, oh, it just, that's nice. That's absolutely lovely. Then it's next to that. And it's really obvious that they've done some things and not others. So yeah, Far Harbour looking honestly very, very comparable to the base game. But then in all fairness, like the art design here is more about the atmosphere of the mist and the storytelling and the fact that there was actually a large amount of like choice and whatever. It was never so much about new graphics here, honestly. To be honest, Far Harbor always looks a little bit just like the base Commonwealth, just a little bit more washed out and with a lot of mist thrown in on top. Though I will say there has, by the looks of it, been some nice work done to the creatures. The gulpers were always quite attractive, but definitely, I feel like that gulper has been a little bit reskinned. And incidentally, I'm about to be eaten by a different gulper. Just a young one, though. I'm sure it's fine. Meanwhile, over in Nuka World, I came over to Kitty Kingdom, because it's probably the land which has got, well, maybe with the exception of the Galactic Zone, it's certainly got an awful lot of unique, more interesting kind of textures and assets in here. So if there's one place that would be nice to see again, we've just got some lovely rock and whatever. Like, it's nice, and when I'm looking for it, I can see the difference. But again, it is just a case that... I could very happily live without it and probably never notice it if I hadn't actually been looking for it in the first place. Ooh, this is the worst example I've seen yet. Over here by King Cola's Castle, we've got right here, you know, like a really nice little brick floor work. You say, that's lovely, that's absolutely nice. And the door, they've done some nice work here with kind of, you know, the iron door with the little kind of bolts in it. And what's it right next to? It's next to pretty much glitch quarry quality wall. Right there. Ooh, flipping dear. And one other little area I thought it might be fun to visit here in the Glowing Sea. Which I will admit, they've actually... I mean, the textures here were always quite nice, but I feel like, yeah, if they've done these up, and I'm almost certain they have, these are lovely now. That is really nice on the floor. Glowing Sea looks much, much better than it used to, I think. And, oh yeah... That's lovely. Okay, so that's nice at least. I'm glad that I'm going to end off looking at this little kind of DLC add-on thing by a bit I actually like. I will say there is not really a wow moment here. There's just a few moments of when you install this DLC, you're just occasionally doing something and go, ah, yeah, that's all right. I think that looks a little bit better, but there's not really a wow moment. Console people do not feel like you're missing out here. You're really not missing out on anything much at all with not having this particular bit of DLC. It is very much a nice to have in the sense that you might well not even notice the damn thing even once you've got it installed. I mean, like, yeah, there's some really nice stuff. Like, the ground here is absolutely lovely, but... Are you ever really sticking your face in the ground trying to figure out how nice the ground looks? For the most part, I personally find Fallout 4 nice and immersive anyway. It didn't really need this. But I'm not going to leave it just quite there because I feel like that wouldn't be particularly interesting. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to compare what Bethesda have done to literally the first thing I can find that is a similar thing that was produced by someone who wasn't Bethesda. Because I checked inside the little kind of the mods menu that's just kind of, you know, available when you're starting up the game. And I noticed that there was a fairly prominent kind of well-upvoted, well-liked just 
HD texture thing that someone had created, just a modder had created rather than Bethesda. They got it out quicker than Bethesda, and unlike Bethesda, it's not 55 flipping gigabytes of space. So what I want to do now is I'm going to uninstall Bethesda's official actual kind of HD texture pack thing. I'm going to install this other guy, whoever this random modder is, and we're going to see how those two compare. So good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to the beginning of the video, except this time I've got rid of that whole 55 gigabytes of nastiness, and what I've replaced it with is pretty much the first mod I found inside the mod section that's built into the game. In this case, the Fallout 4 HD reworked project something something something, the title was too long and it didn't fit on, but whatever. A slightly more modest mod than Bethesda's of course, but with the advantage that it is literally 160 megabytes. And instead of kind of trying to just redo everything a little bit, but leaving it kind of half done and half not, instead it just kind of focuses on a few little bits and pieces it decided to try and improve. Tires, wheels, but you know, very common assets you'll actually come across a lot. Meanwhile, the stuff we've actually taken out still looks just fine. I think you can definitely see, like, compared to the way that these guys were looking at the beginning of the video, you can see now that these streetlights do look a lot worse. But things like, say, the paths and the ground and these textures right here, they still look fine. The difference between what we saw at the beginning with the high texture mod of 55 gigabytes of terribleness and now is uh, extremely modest. Arguably it's actually slightly improved by taking this out because now kind of the variance between the wood and the metal is less extreme. It doesn't kind of stand out quite as much to look at. And as it turns out this texture down here by the water was actually pretty nice already and uh, that wibbliness was already there. So uh, I'm not even sure what the HD texture mod added there because as far as I can tell it looks pretty much exactly the same as it ever did. But what I do like about little mods like this is, rather than the kind of the Bethesda school of thought, which seems to just say, we're just going to retexture everything, or rather 60% of everything, and then kind of, you know, you're basically not going to notice the difference. Little mods like this basically decide they're going to focus their attention on actually creating new meshes for a small number of items they really want to get right. And it means you really do see the difference. So they've got a new bathtub model in here that looks completely different to the old one, and I quite like it. And I know it's a really small thing, but you run into a lot of these. They've redone the wooden boxes. So if we go over to the wooden box over here, the wooden texture on this is now basically superior to everything else. Like, you know, look at the basic wooden texture on this Bethesda asset, albeit it will be slightly, but not hugely improved with a 55 gig. 160 megabytes. We've got this lovely thing right here. That's lovely. I could do with that wood texture everywhere else. Just take that texture and apply it to everything. That's gorgeous. Add in retextured toilet, retextured tires, I think mugs, and they were saying Radex was one of the things they'd done, hang on. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Look at that. Now it looks like an actual little prescription bottle. That's beautiful work. I like little things like that. I way prefer my mods to do little things like that. Fine, I'm all up for just like, you know, a massive reskin of everything at some point or other. But just occasionally, I just like, you know, little details where someone's just picked one thing and made it work really, really damn well. Yeah, you may notice the universe changed, by the way. I realised kind of as Bacon, I pretty much stripped mine Sanctuary Hills. So I went over to one of my kind of backup save testy files that I used purely for that purpose. Ah, oh, you see? This I'm much, much happier with. Like, I admire this a lot more because rather than just taking a bunch of stuff and making it basically completely interchangeable from the original, it's taken a smaller number of things and actually made it really noticeable and put a lot of effort into getting it right. Like, uh, the wheels! The wheels on the cars have been redone and the tyres have been redone. It's a small thing, but look at that. That's way nicer than anything you'll find in the base game or the 55 gig patch for 160 megabytes. Lovely. But to be honest, using the built-in mod system has some real big limitations. You just don't find many massive interesting files there. There's too many restrictions in place. Now, if we want to give Bethesda some real genuine fair competition, we're going to actually have to mod Fallout 4 the same way I mod Fallout New Vegas. That's using Nexus mods. So just one second, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome to Universe the Third. This time, I have disabled that mod I set up just a second ago, I've disabled the actual 55 gigabyte ridiculous mod of ridiculousness, and instead what I've done is I've installed three mods I got off Nexus mods, just pretty much like ones I found very, very quickly. Vivid Fallout 4 landscapes, uh, wet, the water-enhanced textures, 
and Fallout retexture, which looked like it was primarily for clothes. So here we are in yet another version of Sanctuary Hills. And I want to start somewhere very particular, which is, you may recall last time we were here with the 55 gigabyte patch, or rather two turns ago, you may recall how absolutely bloody awful this bridge looked. Well, these mods that I've installed, and by the way, um, I didn't actually take note of the file size, but the file size did seem to be um, basically under a gigabyte for all three of them, because I've still got like basically the same amount of storage as I had on my SSD as previous. Let's go down to that horrible point here by the trap. You'll notice... The wood suddenly looks a lot better. Not perfect, but now, all of a sudden, if I look at this wood and that metal next to it, there's no longer a massively obvious change in quality. The wood on the bridge into Sanctuary Hills from this hobbyist sub 1 gigabyte patch is now looking better than in Bethesda's official 55 gigabyte patch, which is just, quite frankly, flipping embarrassing, all things considered. And by the way, I like the new water mod. The new water mod, which makes things... I forgot I'd got Molotovs installed there. I thought I had a flipping frag grenade. Luckily, this is the world of bacon, where health and limbs just grow back very quickly if you stab yourself with a syringe. It's beautiful. But yes, actually, just toss a Molotov over there, and we've now got a lovely... Ooh, I like that. Do you not like that? I like that. There's a big splash now. It makes big splashes when things go into the water. Isn't that good? I like that. Now, there's one location I'd like to go to in particular, because it really does highlight the differences. Because, like, again, once YouTube's compressed this, it's probably going to be quite subtle. It's going to be difficult to see the differences between all the different versions. I would say, like, you know, if we get right down here and look here at the ground and everything, like, I would say at this point, the basic stuff like the ground is looking as good as in Bethesda's official patch. Let's just quickly run over to a wall. Because, like, even in Bethesda's patch, if you stuck your face right into the wall, you really could see... I think that's looking just as good, if not better, than Bethesda's patch. If I kind of stick my head actually into the wall and look really close up at those brick textures. Maybe it's a tiny bit better in Bethesda's, but it's a really, really tiny difference, to be honest. Ah, and it's raining, and as you'd probably expect from the wet mod, rain is a lot more impressive all of a sudden. Rain is heavier, the raindrops are bigger, and the pattern of rain hitting the water is just generally an awful lot more impressive. I like this one. I might even keep this one, quite frankly. I quite like it. I think it's good. So, welcome back to the Nakano residence, of course. We visited here with the first mod, and I will say, once again, to be honest, I think the wood here is now superior to what we actually saw in Bethesda's 55 gig patch, but... This is where things get very different because, well, you may recall, things did not look like this before. This is a very interesting and different take on how to actually do this area. Like, the colouring of the rocks and the actual ground has gone very, very different from the kind of much lighter sand of Bethesda's 55 gig patch. This is a little bit on the darker side. And I've got to say, actually, when you get right down and really look up close at this sand here, I think I might prefer this one. <laughs> I think I might genuinely prefer this one quite nicely. Oh, by the way, the splash over there, that's nothing wet provides. Now when there's kind of boats moored up or whatever, you actually get proper, like, splash and spray and whatever. It's not perfect, but I will say, I do quite like it. It just gives a little bit of extra life and movement to the environment. So I quite like that a lot. But yeah, we've got this kind of, this new sand texture and the rocks look very, very different. But yeah, if you get your head right stuck up to them, they look lovely. I feel like this one is... But, I mean, look at that. That wood's lovely. That's just really, really nice indeed. It's just a superior thing. And, uh, incidentally, that's basically only two of the three that you're seeing right now. You're seeing Vivid Fallout and you're seeing the Wet mod. We'll head to Diamond City in a second. I'll also show you the Wasteland retexture, which appears to be primarily or entirely for clothing. So here at Diamond City, just get yourself stuck right in, get right up to the clothing, and you've got to say, it is looking like a significant improvement as far as I'm concerned. Now, it is quite possible right now I am being guilty of finding changes because I'm trying to look for them, but I do feel like, yeah, actually... The clothing does look like it is of a nicer quality here, thanks to that lovely wasteland retexture. What if we get right up to Polly and look at her lovely new one? I'm pretty sure that's lovely and new. So basically my conclusion is with three mods that I found in under a minute that I was able to install in about 30 seconds because they are 55 times smaller, probably more like 100 times smaller than Bethesda's actual official HD retexture pack thing, I've been able to make the game look, I think, superior to what Bethesda's official version did. So, that's a little bit embarrassing for Bethesda, I guess. 
Still, Fallout modders, a creative lot. Probably we should have expected that by the time Bethesda got their act together, the Fallout 4 modding community would long since have created something vastly superior anyway. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. That is my quick look at Bethesda's high-resolution texture pack thing. Honestly, I'm not even sure it's worth the trouble, to be honest. If you're on console you're not really missing out much. You could probably improvise something together that's pretty much as good, arguably maybe not quite as kind of widespread, but with some much more impressive results just using the mods you can already download. And if you're on PC, well, to be honest, you can just use what's on Nexus mods already. It's already superior, vastly lighter, much smaller hit on performance, and looks a lot better than Bethesda's official patch. So, yeah... To be honest, I don't really see much point in using this. I think if you do want to improve the way the textures look, yeah, just go for what's on Nexus mods or on console, go for what's actually on the built-in mod system, because I suspect the end result will be much nicer. I mean, look at that. That's definitely different to how it used to be. The base game, this area did not look quite like this. It definitely didn't quite look like that. But that's much nicer. That's just so much nicer. Yeah, you know what? I haven't really been bothering to mod Fallout 4 so far. Mainly because Fallout 4 always seemed fairly stable and I was keen on the stability. But to be honest, Fallout 4, just the base game, has been kind of losing a little bit of stability anyway. I've definitely had more crashes in recent weeks and months than I did when it first came out. Possibly, I don't know, some of the stuff introduced by the DLC may have done that. So, maybe I will start looking at lightly modding Fallout 4 as well, ladies and gentlemen. We shall see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been my quick look at both Bethesda's official high-resolution texture pack thingy, and also, to my mind, some superior amateur alternatives. Thank you very much, and goodbye. I'm supposed to be killing myself now. Uh, which is something Claire probably hasn't realised because she's bloody just left all of this soap. No, 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 don't! Don't, stupid baby! <laughs> Give me that damn fork! Yeah, we get that. Oh, he's blocked! Ah, oh, flip the painting! I just love the slightly sad look as the smoke rises from the corpse of the cooked baby. <laughs>